Hey everyone, my name is John Grimsmo, and welcome to another Knife Making Tuesday. This week, we're going to be talking about Timascus. Now this is a very cool, very expensive, exclusive material made by Alpha Knife Supply, and it is a titanium Damascus. So it's actually made from two different grades of titanium, usually 6AL4V, which is a good common alloy, and then CP titanium, which is commercially pure titanium. So they basically fold the two together and squish them and heat them and pound them. And this is just layers upon layers and upon layers of two different kinds of titanium, like twisted together, forged and heated and crunched and all kinds of really cool stuff that's beyond my comprehension. But So what you're left with is a piece of very expensive, awesome Timascus. Um, when they sell it, they heat anodize one end so you can see the grain. And then I tried to electro anodize a range of colors on the other end, just to see what kind of colors I could get from it. Um, but the heat anodizing is typically what what the guys will do. So you just take a big blowtorch and and heat it up. And since they're two different grades of titanium, they anodize at different rates and different colors. That's why you get the two different shades of colors. So I'm going to be making a Norseman out of this. Uh, for a customer that's been waiting for a very long time because um, I've had this piece for well over a year if not longer probably nearing a year and a half that I've had this piece and I just haven't had a chance to machine it yet so the tricky part for me is not so much getting handles in here because this will fit decently well onto my handles fixture but it's utilizing all of this material to the most potential that I can so that I'm not wasting material because this stuff can be anywhere from 10 to 30 times more expensive than plain old titanium so you don't want to waste it um, so with this piece I'll be able to get two handles so a pair of handles but then I also want to snake like a pocket clip in here and another pocket clip on the other side and then I can machine thumb studs in all the extra voids so I can get a whole ton of thumb studs out of the little corners and bits and stuff so the tricky part for me is coding how to where to put the thumb studs and, and the CNC code required to make that and the pocket clips at weird angles and everything's a really tight fit so I'm using much smaller end mills than I usually do. So it's going to be a really fun, interesting project and I already spent the majority of my free time yesterday um, writing the code in SolidWorks for this. Let's check it out. So you can see here I've got my two handles and then thumb stud, thumb stud, thumb studs, thumb studs, clip, clip, and um, the handles overlap the thumb studs a little bit just because of a weird offset issue, nothing to worry about, it's a good flicker. Um, anyway, so that's what I've been working on, and I've got my code now, let's turn on the, um, Damascus Clip 3D Mill Bottom. You can see all the red lines are my, that's the tool path. Do, 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 do. I didn't think LCD monitors flickered. Yeah, of course they do. Um, yeah, so that's the tool path. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. And that's what I'm working on today. All right, now that we're in the shop, I'm going to put it on the Tormac, mount it up on the vacuum pallet, and show you how I do all my clamping for that. Let's go check it out. Alright, so here we're using the Mighty Bite Vac Magic pallet changer system. Um, I've had this for over a year now and I absolutely love it. I use it for absolutely everything. This does not leave my mill. So there's a big O-ring that goes around the outside and this is one of my many vacuum pallets. That just, uh, there's locating pins right there. So I can't find the holes, there we go. And then there's just a little, um, vacuum knob right here that turns the vacuum on. Push the part down, it's now vacuumed down, holding uh, a very good amount of vacuum right now, almost 24 inches. Uh, if you're going to have a vacuum pallet, you absolutely need a vacuum gauge. Couldn't live without mine because you, then you know what's going on. You have to know what's going on. Um, okay, so 
There's one hole through the center of this pallet that actually sucks vacuum. All the rest are just threaded holes, so they're kind of an optical delusion. Um, but yeah, the, this is the only one that goes all the way through and creates the suction. You can see I've got a big O-ring around the outside that I do some of my some of my sheets of handles. So I get 18 handles out of this sheet and it sucks down just like that. But for smaller work, like this Tamascus, um, I'm just going to use one little grid right here. Uh, the part's not wide enough to do two grids, unfortunately. Two grids would be better because you get more holding power. But I'm going to make the best that I can do with just one grid. And I found that, check this out. Okay, so if I suck it down, I can still um, wiggle it a little bit. I don't know if that's obvious, but... So with certain cutting forces, that could shift. You know, it could wiggle. And that could is absolutely unacceptable for something as expensive as this little piece of metal. So, I'm going to use some additional clamping to make sure that it never moves. Um, so I've got Mighty Bite sliding stops here. They're totally adjustable and I've just got them lined up to be perfectly parallel with each other. And then I put a little scratch in my fixture right there so I know how far the part goes this way. I can see it right there. And then here I'm going to use Mighty Bites um, cam action fixture clamps. These are great little things to have around. Um, it's just a brass hex basically with an off-center nut or off-center screw so that as you rotate the screw, the head kind of goes around. So that a rotation of the screw actually pushes the clamp around in a circle like this, so towards the part. Um, my spacing doesn't allow me to put the clamp directly onto the material, so I've just got a 5 8 parallel right here. And I have to grind the titanium down a little bit to make this clear on one side. But now, it's, now it fits, so I've got one over there, one over there. This way, Nothing is protruding from the top of the fixture. I don't have a clamp that attaches it like this. It's held down very securely with the vacuum, and now it's held positionally stable with the clamps. So it's not going to lift up, it's not going to move, um, and it's going to be super perfectly stable. So if I just line this up, suck it down, shirts down, then I cam action these clamps. So there we have it. Um, this is how I'm going to be holding it down. If I need to, I get full access to the top of the part. If I wanted to, I could use a small face mill and face it down, but I'm not going to end up doing that. Um, but yeah, this will let me do all of my machining for the back side of the handles and the back side of all the thumb studs and pocket clips. So I realized that because I'm trying to maximize this material as much as humanly possible, my end mill will be coming off the end of the piece and digging into my little spacers right here. And since these are, you know, perfectly ground parallels, I don't really want to ruin these. So I made up a set of aluminum, same thing, 5 eighths, that will, uh, I'll be using instead.
Now it's changed to a quarter inch four fluid end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. It's gonna cut the bearing pockets. It's spiraling down. And then at the end, I go super duper duper slow to leave a really good surface finish. So that section it's doing right now is this little thumb groove right here. Chamfering all the burrs. And that's it for that tool. Well, going good so far. Almost done. Got a uh, 3 30 seconds cobalt drill bit in here. Gonna drill all the holes that I need to drill. Not all the way through, because that'll screw up the vacuum. Especially drilling into titanium, I found that the cobalt drill bits last so much longer than a regular high-speed steel drill bit. So I either use cobalt or carbide for all my drilling. And they're not that much more expensive, so... It's so nice to finally see this, this material being put to good use. guy's a little 55 thou drill bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's also cobalt. Might be carbide, I can't remember. It's just going to drill the D10 hole. That little guy right in the middle. So that's the D10 ball hole. I'm using eight different tools to make this the back side of the handles and then a separate ten different tools some of the same ones to do the top side so now this is a uh, this is a 116 four fluid from Lakeshore and it's going to clean up all the holes makes them all the right diameter and the right depth makes the bottom of the hole really flat So now it's switched to my 440 thread mill. 
Uh, this is also from Lakeshore Carbide. So I'm doing thread milling right now, which basically uses the machine and little end mill to make a threaded hole. Uh, it's a very, especially with such a tiny thread mill, it's a very tricky process to master. But I finally got the hang of it, and uh, I get really good tool life now. I'll show you what this does once the handles are done and I flip them over. So the handles work perfectly, now it's on to the thumb studs and the clips right now. Now I'm going to come in and drill all those holes that I just spotted out. I'm doing a really short peck, like 18 thousandths of an inch or something, to break the chip so that they don't uh, get really long and stringy and stick to the drill bit. So here you can see the back side of my two pocket clips, one right there and one over here. So I've roughed them out with an eighth inch flat end mill from Lakeshore and then I'm going to go in here with an eighth inch ball in the tool right now and do a 3D profile pass so that they end up looking like this. Gives it a nice contour, nice machining lines. and the perfect shape that we want. I'm running out of coolant. Yeah. Gotta fill my reservoir. So now I'm working on the very last operation, and that is cutting out all the thumb studs and both the clips, but not all the way down. I'm just leaving uh, ten thousandths on the bottom so that it doesn't break vacuum and then cause all kinds of problems. Um, so after doing all of those, it got to right about here, and then I heard the end mill break, so I got to put a new end mill in. But I'm not complaining too much because uh, it just did you know quite a bit of work for a little one sixteenth end mill. Um, so I've got another one all lined up anyway, so I'll just put that in and keep her going. And that's the last operation for the backside. I don't know how many hours of machining I've already got in here, but it's a lot. All done? So a couple things. A, I want one. And two, it worked perfect. There were quite a few burrs on the backside, so Eric just had to take some sandpaper and scuff them down, but uh, it looks and works pretty awesome. Clips turned out great. And now we just um, break them apart. Like that. Break each one out. 
and then move them on to the next fixture. So that's it for today. Um, we'll see if this video ends here or if I keep going. If not, later.